Keith. Well, good morning. My name is Keith Bovian, and I've been our club member for about seven years. As Janet mentioned, and Mark too, we all should have a fire extinguisher in our Jeeps, and it gets uh, pretty hard packed inside. Most of them are powdered type in, uh, in their uh, compound. <coughs> Off-roading, this stuff can get packed down pretty solid because we don't take them out and it stays probably a horizontal position or vertical on your roll bars. That powder will cake down to be quite compact. Most of the dry chems are nitrogen charged. Uh, that keeps any moisture out of it to uh, prevent uh, hardening of that compound inside. So much like uh, we have a insurance policy on our vehicles uh, for the just in case or the accidents, we should also have a fire extinguisher. There's various types uh, are located on the label, ABCs, BCs, uh, water types are just A. Uh, they all have a specific type of fire that they will address from textiles to the, the foam and com or, uh, composition of your interiors to electrical and grease fires, gasolines, that type. So they are spelled out. I recommend an ABC type that covers all those uh, types of fires. The, the ABC compound is a monoammonium phosphate. So it's, uh, that's the active ingredient in it that helps smother the fire. Uh, I would recommend reading the label and how to properly use your specific type of uh, fire extinguisher. They have different applications. If you take a water extinguisher that are in different locations in a business, you wouldn't want to directly hit that stream of water against the base of that fire. It would cause it to propel and push back. With a dry can, you sweep over the top of the fire, which covers it, and it melts down and smothers out the, the fire. They also have uh, hydro testing dates on most cylinders. The ones that are more expensive will be reusable. As you can see, a lot of these have a plastic valve. If you use this, it's a one-time use disposable fire extinguisher. You can take it and they will not refill this fire extinguisher. It's a disposable. So uh, in doing so, because it's a plastic valve, it may have a crack in it, so it would not hold pressure or may cause uh, an accidental discharge. These types here, again, these are throwaways. Uh, they have an expiration date on them. They do that for a purpose because the O-ring may dry up. Uh, the propellant, uh, the charge in it will leak out. So these may or may not work depending on how old they are. Uh, I notice uh, we have some, uh, Rob's looking at right there. They have the metal valve in it. That one can be an recharged by a... Uh, a facility that does so specifically in fire equipment. So that one will be usable. You may pay more for those, but they're well worth it. You want to look at your pressure gauge? They all have an indicator. It should be in the green. Any partial discharge uh, is it, it's going to leak out. There's an O-ring in there on the stem. When that powder gets built up around that, it won't last much longer. So it will leak out the nitrogen. So if you plan to use it, use it thinking that, okay, one time squirt, it's okay, still reads green, it won't stay long. Uh, any damage uh, to the cylinder itself, whether it's a big dent or rust, you want to observe that as well. If the pitting and rust, I would recommend changing out to a new failure extinguisher because that too will cause leakage. What if your gauge has water in it? <laughs> it has water in it? Uh, well, I have condensation in my gauge. Uh -oh. Well, you know, and, and that's, that, that's okay too because the gauge itself is just a plastic cover to protect the needle. So if there's moisture in the gauge area, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad because it just could have a crack in the plastic cover. So you may want to try to protect that gauge because uh, if it damages the needle, it's my Jeep. <laughs> Everything's wet. In, in my Jeep. Constantly. Spend the extra money and get a metal valve if you can. I mean, I have. This is mine. It's a plastic one. I've had it for many years. It's better to have one than not have one. Exactly. It's that full insurance. 
So you can take and do self-inspection on your own fire extinguisher. And I'll demonstrate that outside after the meeting if you want more clarity. <laughs> Look at the gauge. Make sure that the needle's still in the green zone. Look at your valve. Some of them have a nozzle that'll unscrew. Look into the valve, make sure there's no spider nest in there or mud. In our case, it's going off-road, mud uh, packed in there. Make sure that's clear and un unobstructed. Again, it's charged with the nitrogen and it has powder. You can take the palm of your hand, bang it, to loosen up that powder. Do that several times until you can feel the free flow of that powder moving throughout the cylinder. And you, you can feel that moving back and forth. It should be loose. And because we off-road so much, that gets packed down, so it's a good idea to do it know. monthly. I got bang it against the tar and save the You can bang, you, you can take a rubber mallet. This, I, when I did inspections, I would take a rubber mallet and I'd pound it on the side back and forth several times until it's free flowing. So on that side of the fire extinguisher, uh, it has a rubber hose on it. You want to remove that hose, make sure that the hose itself is unobstructed. Uh, many of them have a quick safety pin. The one Alan has there has a breakaway zip tie type. Make sure that your safety pin is locked into the valve handle so it prevents dis uh, an accidental discharge. These have these quick breakaway plastic pins. Uh, you want to make sure that that protects that valve. If you have a loose one, don't secure it with a piece of tape or a zip tie that isn't designed to hold that safety pin in. The idea of that type of safety pin in plastic is to twist it sideways and it snaps that plastic and you pull the pin. And again, read the, uh, the label on how to apply your specific type of fire extinguisher to the fire you're addressing. Uh, as I might note, don't do anything that's going to put yourself or somebody else in a dangerous situation if the fire is uncontrollable. I mean, these things will discharge in less than a minute if you hold it down. So you only have quick response to address a small fire at the beginning. When it gets out of control, back away and file an insurance claim. <laughs> I know of two, three incidents last year where the Jeep Club members have had to use their fire extinguishers. Two were out of Judd and one was in Colorado when a group went to Colorado. So they are important to have in your Jeep. It's the quickest way to lose your Jeep out on the trail other than rolling it. So. Uh, how often do you think we should check our fire extinguishers and just make sure that well, because we off-road I mean even at home in your garage you should have uh, a, a monthly inspection when I service equipment we had different accounts that had monthly bi-monthly and uh, semi-annually and annually so it depends on where it is how it's being used and stored so, uh, you can contact uh, whatever county that you're in there's a proper disposal of your fire extinguisher I'm not sure every county is different or the same there's a hazmat dis uh, disposal place that you can take them to. So Questions? now I just want to make a point. These are worth nothing if they're buried in a box, buried in the back of your Jeep, That's shoved right. under your seat. How many times have I gone to you guys' vehicles and said, where's your fire extinguisher? Um, hold on, let me look for it. Well, by the time you say, hold on, let me look for it, it's too late. So, so keep them accessible. Easy, easy access. <laughs> they should not be obstructed. Very quickly. You got to think about soft tops too. You got to Open the tailgate, unzip the top, pull the top open if you got it like on the roll bar in the back. I mean, it's a neat place to keep it, but Not think easy. about that. Easy access. When, you, when you're wheeling, you might want to keep it close. Easy Where access. Where is the best place to keep it? I keep mine right here to, on the side by my door so I can get out and grab it if I have to. That's where, that's where mine is mounted as well. And also use the proper uh, bracket that comes with your fire extinguisher rather than just. <laughs> Don't zip tie it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't zip tie it down where you can't get it out. Yep. A quick acronym that we learned at work is called PASS. I don't know if you've heard that used before. PASS. P-A-S-S. -S. Pull. Pull the pin. Aim. Aim. Squeeze. Squeeze. Sweep. And if you're breathing it or whatever, the chemicals harmful? I really shouldn't breathe it. I mean, I worked in uh, refilling these all the time, but I always used a, a face mask when uh, recharging them. So it's, it's ideally not advisable, but it, it won't. Somebody gets free with it. It, it, it won't hurt. It's not deadly. Yeah, it's not deadly. Uh, but only materials, gas, and oil. So again, ABC is probably your better option when you have your Jeep or in your house. Uh, 
So I'm here to talk about our Jeeps and not our homes. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah.